recently, I had a housewarming ceremony back at my place in Hyderabad. That's when my aunt, who was very fond of me, came to my mother and asked, "Is he still working in the social sector?" And my mother replied, "Yes." And then my aunt disappointingly looked at my mother and asked, "What was his percentage in engineering? Did he struggle?" Or did he drop out? And my mother said no. Then my aunt said, "Then why is he working in the social sector? Because her son has taken engineering, is in a good path, is working in a good company, and is settled." Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's how social sector is perceived today. In fact, today I have worn this dress only to make you believe that I work in the social sector. These. Are the kind of stereotypes we face every day. Had I walked in a, a, a T-shirt, no one would have believed that I am working in the social sector. So, good evening, everyone. My name is Abiram, an engineer by profession. And I have close to five years' experience of working in the social sector. I am here today to share an idea about how social transformation can be brought by simply staying committed. And by how dealing with these kinds of questions every day, I have still been able to make a small contribution in the villages of India. And let me share my experience through three phases of my life. The first phase, where I was in my seventh grade, and I was part of a scouts and guides group. Yes, that is how I looked in my seventh, cute and innocent. So I was in my seventh grade. Uh, part of a scouts and guides team where we had to do an activity where we had to go and clean up a slum nearby to the school. And once we finished cleaning the community, the reactions of the people in the community I still remember priceless. That was when it stuck in my mind. This is something I want to do more. It made me happy, but I didn't know how. And then in my tenth class. We had a career counseling session in our school, where each student was being guided on what is the next best career option to choose based on their interest. And when my chance came, everything was leading to helping people. And then the nearest option the counselor had suggested that time was for me to join the armed forces. And after the session, I was coming back uh, to the class, thinking about what he said. And when I came to the classroom, my teacher asked me, "What did he suggest?" And when I said, he told me to join the armed forces. Everyone laughed. Believe me, everyone laughed because one, they didn't imagine me joining the army, and two, they thought I didn't have a goal because others chose either they want to study in the top engineering colleges of India or Join the bureaucracy. So I dropped my agenda and I entered the race. And yes, I did engineering. That's when we enter the second phase of my life. After engineering, I joined the Teach for India fellowship. I got selected, but then secretly I didn't tell it to my parents because I had to make a choice. Between either joining an MNC or serving people, because the childhood dream was still alive, the child who was laughed at was still alive, and this time, I gathered courage. I spoke to my parents, and I convinced them. Thankfully, they got convinced, and I got a wonderful opportunity to work in a school as a teacher, as part of the Teach for India Fellowship, which I'm thankful for, because at Teach for India. I felt happy. I felt liberated, and I was enjoying every day working there, even on a Saturday and a Sunday. And looking at these innocent kids made my day. After the Teach for India Fellowship, I got an amazing opportunity to work in the grassroots of India. This gave me an opportunity to move from the cities to the villages, and then the third phase starts where. Uh, from an underserved school, I walked into an interview with a person who was recruiting on behalf of a big American university uh, uh, to build a team to create India's smart villages. And 
I got selected and there were a lot of large uh, corporations, government people who were part of the team and we got a chance, an opportunity to work with one of the chief ministers of states of India, one of the states of India. And it was a six month project and I got a chance to work in the grassroots and make an impact. But then the honeymoon didn't last long because we were five months into the project and we were going towards no impact. And th that, that was the point where I spoke to the person who recruited me, my senior colleague, and we had an open discussion and we came to a conclusion that, yeah, we were not able to make a difference because we were trying to make the large corporations happier. We were trying to make our sponsors happier. Well, that's fine. But then my core agenda, the child who wanted to make a difference was missing. My vision was not aligned. And that's when me and the senior colleague decided, let's do something on the side. Let's make an impact for the people. And that's when we started this skills accelerator in the side. And guess what? We were able to create seven entrepreneurs and 16 jobs in a span of one month. But then the day came when the chief minister of the state visited the village to see the impact that we had done. And we were waiting outside uh, with all the boys, girls, artisans, women, businessmen who were part of the project from the village waiting to show our work. But then we didn't get the opportunity because we ran out of time. We didn't get the opportunity to go and meet him as all the large corporations who were part of the project took all the limelight. And we were last on the agenda because we were from a small company. And we were sitting like this, waiting, waiting, and we kept on waiting. And we never got a chance. That's when I decided, should I continue the work here and look for the limelight or do something which I am really passionate about? So after this, the project grew. Uh, it got more funding, more villages to work on, more support from people. But then I had a choice again, whether to stay committed to my vision or join this organization. And that's when um, I, I, I decided to join a senior colleague who worked with me in the project, uh, who, where he, he was willing to take this work forward, but being part of a small NGO. And I, I thought, let me think. And then the child in me said, let's help the people not the organizations. And that's when I took a decision to join my senior colleague and work for the small NGO called 1M1B. And when I made this choice, it was simple. But then I got called immature. I was told I was not looking at a bigger picture. But then it was simple for me because I was looking at a higher purpose. I was looking at helping people at the grassroots. And when I gave up on this opportunity, people thought I gave up on visibility. I gave up on a, a handsome fellowship. Because I gave up on that to make an impact, the work I did in 1M1B for the past two years gave me an opportunity to represent India at the United Nations and talk about whatever I did in the villages. I was able to create 20 entrepreneurs, provide jobs for 50 people, enhance income of 160 people, which include artisans, women, young men, businessmen, and 600 students who are, un are undergoing training in the villages uh, and will be placed in the next two months. And this is the same program which we had piloted during the Smart Village project. And now this skills accelerator, as part of the small nonprofit 1M1B is being done in 16 places across India and impacting more than 2,000 people. And if I can say, something that I'm more passionate about and something which is close to my heart is reviving artisans. Because these are the people who are getting lost in oblivion. These are the people who need help. And we are supporting them by giving, getting them better market opportunities and giving them good livelihood. And one thing led to another, now, now from education to livelihood. And I'm here working on helping these artisans on an exciting project, working on reviving the artisans of India. And I think if millions of youth like us can unite, 
we can transform the 640,000 villages in India. We can bring that change. If I may suggest something to all of you, I would suggest that please stay committed. Stay committed to your own agenda. Money will come and go. Limelights will come and go. But staying committed will give you everything one day. The road to transformation is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And doing consistent work will give you that opportunity and will give you a chance to make a change. And if youth like us can unite and bring a change in the society, then nothing like it. And I urge all youth here to, st to stand up and look at what you are passionate about. Look around, go to the grassroots of the country, go to the villages, try yourself out. Even if it is harder, even if it, yeah, even if it is harder, even if the road is tough, but don't give up on your commitment. Stay true to your agenda. The road might be tough, but the journey is fascinating and the destination even more.